Platelet-rich plasma, also known as PRP, is enjoying a spike in patient interest. Today, I want to review the process that we use for preparing our PRP and show some of our patient data. After an initial patient consultation, emphasizing the experimental nature of this treatment and the fact that side effects might include swelling or tenderness to the scalp, we talk about what areas the patient is interested in treating. We use a PRP separating tube known as a Y-cell bio ERP tube. The whole blood is inserted into these tubes and placed in a centrifuge for five minutes. This typically yields about one to three cc's of platelet-rich plasma and four to five cc's of platelet-poor plasma. While injecting, it is important to continue to agitate the PRP A-cell slurry, otherwise a small plug of A-cell particles can form. This whole process usually produces a total of 10 to 18 cc's of PRP A-cell, which we then inject two to four millimeters below the surface, hopefully at the level of the bulge. We do, however, numb our patients before injecting with five to 10 cc's of one or 2% lidocaine with a one in 200,000 epinephrine in a ring block. This whole process usually takes about an hour and many patients return to work afterwards or simply go about their day since there are very few restrictions with regard to activities or eating, medications, etc. If we are injecting PRP alone, we typically inject at a one month interval. If we are using the PRP A cell, we inject at three month intervals. Both of these treatments need to be continued for at least six months before a patient can expect to see any effect, even if a hair check device or cross-sectional trichometer picks up an improvement before then. In our practice, we track the progress of our patients using a hair check device, and it does a better job than photos can because it essentially is measuring the wood in your forest, not just the number of trees. Here are the charts of several of our patients' results over several treatments of three months apart, and you can see how the areas we inject, namely the front and the top, seem to have some additional growth, while the areas we do not inject, specifically the back of the head at the donor area, do not change much at all with the treatment. In my experience, the PRP or the PRP and A-cell treatments do not replace the standby medications of finasteride and minoxidil, but they can be useful especially in patients who cannot take these medications or as an adjunct for those patients who want to do as much as they possibly can.